What comes to mind when you think of Chinese animation? If you're like most Americans, probably not very much. Compared to the prolific animation industry of its neighbor, Japan, Chinese animations have received little recognition on the world stage. But if we look under the surface, we can see that not only are China's animated films just as interesting as those from Japan, but the production of the films reveals a microcosm of China's history. Animation in China began with advertisements. Beginning in the early 1920s, the four Wan brothers of Shanghai created commercials for products such as typewriters and tobacco. However, everything changed when the Japanese invaded Shanghai in 1932. The brothers left their advertising work to create patriotic cartoons, an effort that culminated in the production of China's first feature-length animated film. The film, Princess Iron Fan, retold a chapter from the familiar story Journey to the West, but it wasn't a simple mythological yarn. It delivered powerful messages about perseverance, teamwork, and fighting spirit, and it was an instant hit throughout the Japanese occupied nation. Because of the instability caused by the civil war between the communist and nationalist troops in China, animation production was sporadic throughout the 1940s. There were some propaganda films, such as The Emperor's Dream and Turtle Caught in a Jar that ridiculed nationalist leader Chiang Kai-shek, but the industry as a whole didn't pick up again until the 1950s, after the communists won the civil war and the People's Republic of China was formally established. In the New Republic, the Ministry of Culture established a national cartoon studio in Shanghai, giving it the task of creating films that were not only educational and entertaining, but distinctly Chinese. The new studio took this opportunity to create animated shorts that reflected the values of the time. Several films, including The Spirit of Jinsong and The Magic Brush, ridiculed landlords and glorified hard-working peasants. Another moral tale, The Conceited General, cautioned against arrogance while promoting compassion. A more openly propagandistic effort, New Things on the Roadside, featured idealized peasants living in a peaceful countryside commune. Then, in 1956, Mao Zedong introduced the Hundred Flowers campaign, which was intended to let a hundred flowers bloom in the field of culture. This caused a great boom in all of China's artistic fields, including animation. It was during this time that Chinese animators produced some of their most memorable stories and introduced China's three unique visual styles, paper cut animation, folded paper animation, and brush painting animation. Paper cut animation was developed by Wang Guchan and was first used to create Piggy Eats Watermelon in 1958. Many other films used the same technique, including 800 Whips, Fishing Boy, and Mr. Nan Guo. Folded paper animation was developed by Yu Zhang Guang for his 1960 short The Clever Duckling. Brush painting animation was developed by Te Wei as a homage to traditional Chinese watercolor painting. It was first used to create tadpoles looking for their mother in 1960. Spurred by the success of this film, Te Wei went on to create The Buffalo Boy's Flute in 1963. This short has remained one of China's most acclaimed films. In the same year, Wang Shuchan directed a short called A Golden Dream, which attacked rightist individuals, such as military officers, tax collectors, and scholars. Then, in 1964, the Wan brothers came back into the spotlight with their masterwork, Chaos in Heaven. Using vibrant colors and pristine animation, the film told the story of the irreverent Monkey King, who rebelled against and ultimately defeated the arrogant gods. The story was perceived as an allegory for Mao Zedong's rebellion against China's old imperial government. It was very popular because of this and received numerous awards. Unfortunately, the Hundred Flowers campaign was brought to a halt in late 1964 when the anti-rightist campaign came into full swing. This campaign protested against the excesses of the previous years and many animated films received negative backlash. The Buffalo Boys Flute so highly praised only a year before, was banned because it didn't reflect the class struggle and supposedly would numb the consciousness of the public. Chaos in Heaven was also banned, perhaps because the new government feared that they, in turn, would be rebelled against. Only a few animations got past the censors during this period. One of these was Heroic Sisters of the Grasslands, a short film about two young girls who save their flock of sheep. After this, the Cultural Revolution descended upon China. Starting in 1965, 
Most of the nation's artists and intellectuals were banished to the countryside to be re-educated in labor camps. China's most famous animators spent eight years digging ditches, feeding livestock, and picking up trash. It was only in 1973 that they were allowed to return to the cities. Working cautiously after this experience, the Shanghai studio created propaganda films, such as The Little Trumpeter. This film, like many others of the period, glorified the Red Army and derided the Nationalists. Luckily, this situation didn't last. In 1976, the infamous Gang of Four, who were blamed for the Cultural Revolution, finally lost their power. The animators were allowed to let their creative talent shine again, and this led to the creation of one of the studio's most ambitious films, Naja Conquers the Dragon King. The story of a boy who was able to rid his people of four tyrannical dragons, the film not only drew on popular mythology, but served as an allegory for the fall of the Gang of Four. Even after this, however, the country was still shaken from the effects of the Cultural Revolution, which had turned generations against each other and torn apart many families. Decrying this national split was animator Ada, who made the film Three Monks. A silent film that drew on traditional proverbs, it presented the moral that people need to work together in order to survive. Another film, The Plank Bridge, delivered a similar message about cooperation, and later, Zhu Qin made an experimental film, Deer and Bull, that created a potent metaphor for war. Many more excellent animations were produced in the 1980s, but the crux of the industry came in 1988 when Towei animated his masterwork, Feelings of Mountains and Water. This gorgeous and meditative film used his signature brush painting technique and told the story of a master passing his musical art to a young student. One cannot help but notice that this parallels the animation industry with Towei, the Wan brothers, Wang Xuxian, and other aging artists passing on the industry to a new generation. Since the early 1990s, animation in China has steadily become more commercial, and in order to compete on the global market, it has strived to imitate Japanese and Western styles. Because of this, much of the artistry and creativity that made the older films so memorable has been lost, and China's recent films and television programs have become increasingly generic. However, this doesn't mar the fact that China's dynamic history helped it to produce dozens of unique and meaningful animated films that can still be enjoyed today.